So you've passed your Security Plus, what's next? This is the most important thing, and I really want you to focus on technical projects. I actually made a video recently on the best beginner level cybersecurity projects that you can add to your resume, and I'll link that down in my description for you to watch after this video. But essentially right now, you've covered the foundational cybersecurity knowledge that you'll need by passing your Security Plus, and right now your main goal is to get as much technical hands-on experience as you can. If you're watching this video, you're likely someone who's just getting started in cybersecurity. Maybe you're a beginner, maybe you're a college student, bootcamp student, or maybe you're someone in a different field trying to pivot into cybersecurity. So what you really want to do right now is to buff up your resume with as many technical projects that are relevant to the job that you want to apply for. For example, if you want to become an SOC analyst, one of the projects that I covered in my video is how to build an at-home SOC lab. You really want to cater your resume towards the jobs that you're applying for, any relevant cybersecurity skills or tools that you've used in previous projects or even capture the flags. And when you go through those beginner level cybersecurity projects, make sure that you're properly documenting them on your resume so that even though you may not have any previous cybersecurity job experience, at least you have the technical projects to show to employers that you're ready to get that first entry level cybersecurity job. I also have my cybersecurity resume linked below as part of my cybersecurity career resources. Next up is to start following cybersecurity news articles, podcasts, blogs, Twitter accounts, whatever news source or medium that you prefer. This is another very important thing because, because you may very likely get a question asked during an interview about keeping up with cybersecurity news and trends, which is one of the core parts of your job as a cybersecurity professional. I'll add some of the resources on the screen that I personally use and recommend. Something else that I recommend is to download a news aggregator like Feedly. It basically combines all your news outlets, your RSS feeds into one place. So instead of having to go to dark reading and then crux on security and then the hacker news, you can combine everything into one app and scroll through in the mornings, maybe for 10, 20 minutes, just to get an idea of what the big headlines are, what the big breaches are, if there are any big zero day exploits that may potentially affect your future company or jobs, or even popular third party libraries and vendors that companies may use. This will prove to employers that you're knowledgeable and motivated and keeping up with the new breaches, the new attacks in cybersecurity, and that in turn can really help you stand out compared to other candidates who may be focused specifically on getting that hands-on experience or just knowing the textbook knowledge. Just replacing 10 to 15 minutes of you scrolling on your phone on Instagram or TikTok with scrolling through cybersecurity news outlets can really give you a leg up because you know about the current events, because you know about recent breaches, maybe even a recent security event that may have impacted the company that you're going to apply for. Just imagine bringing that up during your interview and being able to talk about it in depth and proving to the hiring manager or the, or the person that you're talking to that, that you know what's going on and you care enough to actually look into that information. Trust me, it's not something that everyone does and it's really going to impress your hiring manager. Next up is online courses and training. So at this point, you may have studied for your Security Plus on your own, you may have taken a course, you may have taken a bootcamp, but if you haven't, I highly recommend getting some kind of official course or certification program on your resume so you can be a fully fleshed out candidate. On top of your Security Plus, the certificate program that I recommend looking into is the Google Cybersecurity Professional Certificate on Coursera. Since it came out, this is likely one of the most popular cybersecurity certificate programs for entry-level professionals. The curriculum is created and taught by Google cybersecurity professionals, so you know that you'll be learning from one of the best cybersecurity teams in the world. This video is not sponsored, but if you're interested, you can start a 7-day free trial linked in my description below. I've also made dedicated videos specifically reviewing the Google cybersecurity certificate program, so you can also check that out first to see if this program is right for you. Next up, this is something that I think will really help you stay out and it is to prepare cybersecurity documentation. So on top of the projects that you've already done in step one, whether you're interested in the red team or the blue team, wherever you want to go in cybersecurity, I want you to create some kind of tangible documentation that you can bring to your next cybersecurity interview. If you're, if you're interested in red team or pen testing or offensive security, then this could look like a pen test report. Maybe you've tried the vulnerability scanning project on using Burp Suite from my beginner cybersecurity projects video. And after scanning a web application, now that you've gotten all these vulnerabilities, create a final vulnerability report and act like this is something that you would share with your manager, share with other teams to explain the vulnerabilities step-by-step step how to create it, what it actually means, potential remediations, because on top of the technical experience and that documentation is something that you cannot get away from in cybersecurity. In fact, after a pen test or a red team assessment, your final product is going to be that report. And this is the thing that you're sharing with stakeholders, your managers, your teammates, anyone else who needs a copy. This is the thing that proves that you've done your assessment, you've done your pen test, 
And no matter how good of a job you did, it won't matter to anyone else unless you properly document it in a way that's valuable and readable for other people. There are plenty of pen test report templates out there that you can use. You can also ask ChatGPT to create one for you if you don't want to use a general template. But taking this into your next interview for let's say a junior pen testing role and being able to speak to it, maybe if your interviewer asks you questions about your experience with vulnerabilities, you can share this report with them to prove to them to not only show your technical capabilities, but also also your soft skills, which are essentially written and verbal documentation and communication, which may not seem as important as your technical skill set, but trust me, it is just as important. The way that you're able to speak to your technical projects and experience that you've had, basically selling your skill set during your interview. You can do the same thing with any role that you're interested in. If you're interested in threat intelligence, you can write a report on that specifically for a potential vulnerability and bonus points if it's a vulnerability that that maybe impacted the company that you're interviewing at. You could have written documentation for incident response based on an SOC simulation that you've gone through on Let's Defend the IO, just as an example of things that you can do. So this way, not only are you proving your technical skill sets with your cybersecurity projects, your educational background, with your CompTIA Security Plus, and any cybersecurity courses that you decide to take, but also your soft skills with this written tangible report that you can share with the employer as part of the hiring process. So while you're applying to jobs, I really want to call out specific specifically that you want to apply to hundreds and hundreds of jobs. Right now, I know it's a tough job market, and I'm sure there are people out there who can apply, interview, and get a job within just with just applying to five or 10 jobs. But entry-level cybersecurity jobs, if you're using those people as a reference, if you start getting rejections after applying to 20, 30, maybe 50 jobs, when you're in the job market, especially for an entry-level job, it can be tougher for you. And that's why I really recommend applying to hundreds of jobs. At this point, job applications are really a numbers game. You wanna to apply to as many jobs that are relevant to you as possible. You also don't have to focus specifically on the title as long as it's a role that you're interested in. Also ignore the years of experience requirements. There are plenty of people who apply to jobs that say they need five to seven years of experience, but they still get it even with zero years of experience after graduating from boot camp which is exactly what happened to this person that I interviewed who graduated from the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp. I'll link that interview down in my description below if you wanna hear more about her experience. But again, don't let it get you down when you face rejections or if you don't hear back from a company, there are plenty of job listings out there and you don't wanna give up early, especially if you're already at the point where you've passed your security plus and you're really getting close to the finish line. And now finally, in terms of interview prep, I have a few videos already made on interview prep for cybersecurity entry-level roles. Again, everything is going to be linked in my description. But on a high level, you'll get behavioral, technical, and, and security design questions. But I will really spend a lot of time preparing for your security design interviews, which are essentially when your interviewer asks you a question that is very broad, like how would you secure a network? Or what would you do if a system has malware? How would you secure a web application? These are all very, very broad questions and, and their goal is essentially to see how deep you can dig, what are the concepts you can cover, and how well do you know them, as well as how practical and creative your answers are. But I go a lot deeper into preparing for these types of questions in my interview prep videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you have any other questions on the entire process on anything that we've covered in this video, let me know in the comments below and I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Let me know if there are any other video topics that you'd like to see from me. This video was actually also one that you guys recommended me to make. So hopefully it was helpful to you and gave you some tangible next steps for you to do after passing your Security Plus, which by the way, congrats on being CompTIA Security Plus certified. If this video was helpful to you, please consider liking and subscribing. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.